the topic of the operating system CPU scheduling algorithms. Almost all the processes are executed between the two states. The one is CPU first, another one is IO first. CPU first state means it's for performing calculation, and IO first states for data transfer from in and out of the system. So between these two states only all the processes are executed. And according to this, uh, CPU, CPU first and IO first we have having the we have to schedule the process in CPU. So next we see. Uh, several scheduling algorithms in OS. So six scheduling algorithms in OS. The first one is a first come first serve. Second one is shortest job next scheduling algorithm and priority scheduling. Then shortest remaining time scheduling algorithm, round robin algorithm, and multiple level queues scheduling algorithm. So these six scheduling algorithms are available in OS. Uh, but among those six scheduling algorithms, we have to find which one is the best one. So that can be find by using the scheduling criteria. So for that we are having some criteria in scheduling algorithms. Uh, those are the first one is the CPU utilization, second one is throughput, after the next one is turnaround time, waiting time and last one is the response time. So what is the CPU utilization criteria mean? Uh, ideally the CPU would be busy of 100% of time. So that is the criteria for CPU utilization. And throughput criteria means number of the processes are executed or completed at a time per unit. So per unit time, how many processes are completed? So that is based on throughput value. And next one is the turnaround time value. Uh, that is time taken for the process to complete from the submission time to the complete time. And next one is the waiting time. Uh, this value is uh, is a time taken for waiting how many uh, times uh, waiting in the ready queue the process or waiting in the ready queue and next one is the response time uh, the, this value is represent the time to rep uh, response the uh, process to commence uh, in the CPU and next one is the so according those scheduling criteria we have find uh, which Scheduling algorithm is best. Okay. So next we see uh, the first scheduling algorithm that is first come first serve. Uh, first come first serves. So as the name of this algorithm, uh, which processes come first from the ready queue that is serve us uh, first to the CPU. Okay. So this is a simple algorithm and it is very easy to understand and implement. And uh, the idea behind of this algorithm is this, which Processes come first from the ready queue that serve to the CPU as first. And the disadvantages of this algorithm is it gives the poor performance of the waiting time. Uh, now we see the example for the first come first serve implementation. Uh, here this is the table, this is the ready queue table. In this table we are having three uh, processes P1, P2, P3. Uh, the P1 process processing time is 24, that is first time. So the first time for the P1 process is 24. And the first time for the P2 process is 3, and first time for the P3 process is 3. So, this is in the ready queue, the process are there. And next, we, by using the con chart, we can know uh, how the processes are occupied the CPU. So, from the con chart, uh, first we have to uh, uh, put which processes come first. So, the P1 is the first process, so it occupies the CPU first. The first time for the P1 is 24, so 0 to 24 milliseconds are occupied for processing the P1 process in CPU. And next P2 process of uh, first time is 3, so after the P1, the P2 is come to the CPU. So the P, uh, P2 first time is 3, so 24 to 27 millisecond is needed for complete the P2 process. And next one is the P3 process, and the first time for the P3 process is 3, so again, uh, it takes uh, 27 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds to complete the P3 process on CPU. So those are the uh, process occupied the CPU and its, and its time. So time is represented in milliseconds. So now we may know from the con chart, uh, P1 process waiting time is 0. So P2 process waiting time is 24 and P3 process waiting time is 27. So that's mean to implement the P1, that's mean to occupy the CPU, P1 must wait 0 millisecond in ready queue. And to occupy the CPU, P2 process must wait in the ready queue for 24 seconds. 
and P3 must wait for occupy the CPU 27 milliseconds in vertical. So finally we have to find the average waiting time of these three processes that is 0, 24 and 27. So these three are the waiting time of the process V1, V2, P3. So we have to arrange it. Uh, finally we can get the average waiting time is 17 milliseconds. So 17 milliseconds uh, the three processes are having the waiting time to occupy the CPU to complete its process. So the next we have to see the shortest job next algorithm in the next video. Thank you student.